Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Today, I'm joined by the best communications and event consultant in the business, Allison Burry. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. I'm so excited to share some of our past experiences together. We've definitely been through some unique situations over the years. What are we discussing today? Today, we are talking about internships and how taking interns can be wonderful if you're patient and you love to teach and grow and help others. But here's some behind-the-scenes stuff that has happened over the many years that we've had an internship program. There, we've had a lot of different fun-ish experiences, and I, they all were different and different reasons that we no longer have these girls working with us. And so, I think the first story that we have to talk through was something that Angela experienced all on her own. Luckily, I didn't have to (laughs) witness all this stuff. (laughs) So tell us what happened. Well, I'll say this was years ago before you started working with me, Allison. And one of the interns, um, I actually had not even met her yet. I was on my way to Mexico to do a destination event. And I got a phone call from this irate mother And I actually answered the phone. I was getting on the plane, and she said something about... She was screaming at me, saying that she didn't know if her daughter was dead or alive, and she moved to Nashville to intern with me, and she was so angry, and she saw pictures on Facebook with blood, and I'm just like, lady, I think you have the wrong number. (laughs) And she's like, no, no, my daughter just moved there. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to call... My assistant, who is overseeing that right now, I am on a plane about to take off. And so I texted the girl that was working with me at the time and said, I don't know what's going on, but uh, please handle this. And so when I got back from my trip, I sat down with the girl that was interning, and my assistant at the time had asked her to please tell me and be honest with me as to what happened. And she was very honest. And what happened was she had a bartending job at night and someone stole her phone. Apparently she was like talking to the wrong guy and his girlfriend got a hold of her phone. And this was so long ago. This was like pre-iPhone days, like when SIM cards and flip phones existed, but you could still take pictures on your phone. And so apparently this girl stole her phone, took the SIM card out and pulled nude photos off her phone of her and photoshopped them and put like fake blood and basically was like threatening this girl on Facebook that she was gonna kill her for like talking to her boyfriend. I mean, it was just so crazy. And I'm like, wait, why do you have nude photos on your phone? Like that's, that's not appropriate, that's not professional. And now I cannot put your headshot on my website as you being my intern because of that. And so we had a long internship, and I learned how to be a very patient leader slash mother, and she learned a little bit more about how to be professional. But she did finish her internship and did a great job, and I think she learned a lot. Um, Another fun experience was these two interns that we had at the same time, which this will... We have since made a rule to never have two interns at the same time again. But these two girls actually got along really well. They were really good friends, and both of them are very, very sweet, and we still have relationships with both both of them today. But they got to learn something after this experience. We were at a wedding setting up, and they we had some downtime, which is extremely rare, but we were sitting and working on our computers and eating lunch, 
and Angela, it was just me and the two interns. Angela was doing something else. And I left. I think I needed to go do something. And when I came back to the table, they were kind of giggling a little. And mind you, they were both in college. Like, I think juniors are seniors in college. So they aren't children or naive or they shouldn't have been at that age. And they um, both are kind of giggling. And I looked at them and I'm like, what? And so at the time, I picked up my phone and they had changed my phone background to a picture of their faces, which is something that, like, kids do. And I was like, good one, very funny, haha, and went and changed it back. And then they, um, they, they looked at me and they were like, we did it to Angela's too. And I, <laughs> I remember, I just like stopped what I was doing and looked up and I'm like, you did what? And they were like, we changed Angela's phone background. And I picked up my phone, her phone and looked at it and I'm like, holy shit. And I was like, okay and I didn't know what to do and I knew that Angela would have been so pissed off because she doesn't let anyone touch her phone and so I was just kind of like I like shocked and I didn't want I didn't know what to do and like I couldn't change it back and so I just let it sit there and Angela <laughs> the funniest part was that Angela walks back and I knew it was just like a ticking time bomb and I was waiting to like watch it explode and she walks back and her phone had been upside down on the table and she picks it up and like clicks the home button to turn it on and she says she was saw the picture and she goes oh this isn't my phone and then sets it back down she's like where's my phone and I'm sitting there and I'm like that's your phone it's your phone it's your phone <laughs> and she's like no that's not my phone and I was like yes it is your phone and uh, the girls were like we changed the background and she oh my gosh was so mad and in a nice way explain to them that that is not something that you do and especially to your boss in changing their background photos and the picture that was her background photo at the time she didn't have any more so she lost it forever and it was the poor girls I thought they were going to start crying I'm sure one of them did go to the bathroom and cry it was really depressing and I felt bad for them but I was just kind of sitting there watching it all go down I was like I'm so glad it's not me <laughs> well you would never do anything like that I mean, I understand that they intentionally were trying to be funny, but like, A, we're in the middle of a wedding setup, which is just stressful. I mean, it just is. Let's be honest. You don't take your boss's phone in the middle of a wedding setup, and anybody who knows me just slightly knows that my phone is my life. I mean, sadly, it is my office. I teach a class about your phone being your mobile office. We have a lot of a lot of confidential information. I mean, yes, it's all backed up, but that's just not appropriate to pick up someone else's cell phone who has a password on there and put the password in and change the picture. Like, it, it was just so inappropriate. In fact, it raises my blood pressure right now and, like, makes me angry because I did have a special picture on there of my little dogs that I didn't have anymore and as much as I preach about backing things up, it wasn't backed up because it was a picture from like, gosh, seven or eight years ago when they were itty bitty baby puppies. But it's just, um, I think that they learned something that day about respect. <laughs> they sure did. So the next one, um, we had an intern once that was out drinking and partying with her friends and somehow she was conveniently driving close to where I live and she got into a car wreck um, in the middle of the night right in front of where my subdivision was where she wasn't paying attention and she went to brake. I guess there was a truck in front of her and or he braked and she like went off to the side into a ditch and pretty and, and then rear-ended him and who does she call? She doesn't call her parents, or which they didn't live in town anyway, but she calls me <laughs> and basically asked me to come and um, help her. So she was okay, and the man was okay, and I looked at her, and I could smell Jack Daniels on her breath, and I said, have you been drinking? And she point blank lies to me and says, no, no, I haven't been drinking. And I'm like, I'm going to ask you one more time. Please don't lie to me, or your ass is going to jail, but were you drinking? And, you know, she wouldn't look me in the eye and basically, you know, shook her head. And I was like, go up to my house and, like, I'll handle the situation. So, thank God my family is in law enforcement. And thank God um, I know a lot of the police officers in the area that I went to high school with. And 
I actually, looking back, probably should have just had them haul her off to jail. It probably would have been a really good learning lesson for her. But it was a good learning lesson for her, and she was very thankful. But then I had to go help her. Her parents came down to help her go car shopping, and she did have to get a new car, and she told her her car. I was just thankful she was okay. But, like, you don't drink and drive and then call your boss, but I guess some people do. <laughs> <laughs> and another time we had a girl who really enjoys dancing and having a good time, which is totally fine, but not when we're working events. So she actually, in more than one situation at weddings, you know, they always play good songs when the party gets started and the band or the DJ are having fun. And we all, we always enjoy like singing or back in the room and dance a little, but she was assigned to stand at the favor table and make sure people took favors as they left the reception. And on multiple occasions, Angela would walk past her and she is, and not dancing like cute, innocent, where it's fine, like throw break, down, break dancing, like popping her booty, like down on the floor. I mean, inappropriate. <laughs> like it's weird that she was even doing it by herself at a wedding anyway. Like things that I wouldn't even do at a club. Like it was just so ridiculous. And she was asked to stop so many times and never would. I mean, every time we would walk past her again, she was dancing again. I was like, do you have some like compulsion that you cannot control yourself right now? And it was such a weird situation and she just wouldn't stop. And many of the girls like that work on the team and who were there that day noticed it and were pointing it out and everybody thought it was weird and we don't know why it wouldn't get through her head, but that was a very strange situation that we were in and it didn't even make sense why she was doing it. And she really doesn't work with us that much anymore. Bless her heart. Um, we had another girl that, and this is oh, this happened a long time ago, even before you worked with me. We had, this was like five logos ago, <laughs> I think. Um, but we had shirts with company logos on them. And I had an intern that she liked to party a lot too and that's fine what you do on your own time but don't do it in my company shirt with my logo and so we were downtown at an event and one of the girls that had been working with me my gosh for probably seven or eight years was like very distracted with this young little intern throughout the whole day they were just partying and cutting up and like you could have a good time on setup but when we have two hours to set up it is ball to the wall like you got to get going and there's no time for like talking and chit chit chatty like I just I cannot be your mom on setup like you need to do your job and she was there to learn and that was not setting a good expectation for her being very chatty so halfway through the event, I looked at both of them and told them to leave because I had asked them separately to please stop being chit chatty. And again, like it sucks having to be the one in charge and like being rude to people. But at that point, I wasn't being rude. Like they were just being extremely disrespectful. So they left and instead of going home, they decided to go to a big bar together. And so at the end of the night, I realized that just because I was pissed and I told him to go, that one of the girls was supposed that I let go was supposed to take the tuxedos back. And she lived close to the place, which was pretty far away from where I lived. So I called her and texted her and asked her where she was and if we could meet to get the tuxedos the next day because I was going to take them with me. She's like, oh, actually, I'm right down the road. Just drop them off when you leave. I'm like, okay. She's like, I'm at this bar. So... I'm driving down the road to this little bar. My headlights are on. It's pouring down raining. And I see this girl hanging over a railing with all these guys chanting around her, pouring tequila from the bottle in her mouth. And I'm like looking and looking. And I'm like, is that my intern upside down? hanging off the railing with her tits hanging out with my t-shirt and my work logo oh my god I was mortified so I texted the more responsible one who'd been working with me for so many years and asked her to come out to the car and we I got soaking wet and I was so pissed and I'm like I don't know what you're doing hanging out with this girl but I'm pretty much gonna tell her she cannot intern with us anymore. Like, that is inappropriate behavior. 
I'm like, you're drunk. How are you going to get home? She's like, oh, I'll just, I don't think Uber existed then. So they cabbed it home. Well, the next morning I get a text message and the intern had peed all in her bed. And, um, so that kind of ended their friendship a little bit. And, uh, I, I did give the girl another chance. And a few times she came to meetings, which our office is very small. And so if you've been drinking, you can smell the alcohol. And then I found out that she pretty much had an alcohol problem and was an al- alcoholic. So we, we had to end that internship a tad bit early. And an- another one, we were, we've worked with her a, a few times. And there was always just something about her that I didn't really love. And one of the girls that works with us really didn't like it either. <laughs> and we... It was just one of those weekends where we just needed help, and she was a good worker, even though her personality wasn't the best. So she was there working with us, and we were working at a hotel. And so Leslie and I had gone upstairs to the bride and groom's hotel suite for their wedding night, and we had taken a bunch of flower petals, and we were going to decorate the room. And so this girl came with us, and we were all up there, and we decorated it and put some cute... Um, flower petals in the room and just made it look a little sweet touch and so we're leaving and we decided to we had some extra petals so we made the for their new last name like the first letter of the name in rose petals on the floor outside of their room door so they saw that when they walked down the hall so Leslie and I are working on making that letter in the petals and all of a sudden this girl who has the interesting personality starts crab walking down the hallway like all the way to the other end of the hallway which was probably what like 200 feet I mean just like on her back on her hands and feet like literally crab walking like two-year-olds do in gymnastics class going down up and down the hall and there were guests walking through and she didn't care and it was also at Nashville's only five-star hotel and she's crab walking in the hallway and there's cameras all around like it was the most Leslie and I just looked at each other and we're like what the hell and it was the weirdest like we didn't know what to say she was significantly older than us so it was just uncomfortable to be like acting like her mom and telling her to stop so we just kind of like walked past her and left I mean it was the strangest thing and then later we were all sitting in the room cleaning some stuff up and she's just talking and talking and talking and starts explaining to Angela (laughs) how she has changed her life around and she used to be one way and now she's been another and she said I that she said she's a BAV now and all three of us like stopped and looked at each other and we're like what is that and Angela's the she was like I don't know what that is and she's like a born again virgin and all of us are like oh and I still don't get it (laughs) like it's so it was just she was the strangest person and after that I was we are not we don't need any help that badly no. that we have to keep her around. So that was a very um, the end of that. weird one, too. <laughs> so a couple of other things. These aren't... These are several people have tried to do this before where it very specifically on the website says that you have to have Apple technology. I mean, we all are on Apple. It's just not productive. And we've tried it. It doesn't work. You have to have a Mac computer. You have to have an iPhone. Um, It's just not good. And there's people who have lied to us before and told us that they had it, and then they don't. Um, We've had other girls where it very specifically says on the website, you have to have a car. Like, we're not a transportation service. We had a person say that they had one, and then they kept saying that they were going to get one, get one, get one, and they never got a car, and they basically Ubered everywhere and said that every, they were late all the time, and they always blamed it on Uber. And kind of after some of these situations, you know, I've come to really believe, like, you're either born proactive or you're not. Like, you cannot teach someone how to be proactive, how to have a good work ethic, how to work in customer service. Yeah, that's definitely been something that took a while for me to learn, too, but is a very good thing to know. And another intern who did not have the proactive gene in her body at all um, was probably the most frustrating person for me. Angela could put up with her a little bit better, but I literally, it got to the point that I would leave the room when she walked in. Like, I couldn't stand to be around her. Her attitude irritated me so badly. 
and there was this one wedding that we were doing, and we had her on the schedule. I mean, when you're interning, you come to all the events that happen during your internship. That's just how it is, unless you have, like, a trip planned or something. But if you're in town, you're expected to come. And so the whole week, I mean, we're talking about it. She comes to rehearsal, and then after rehearsal, she calls me, and I was in the car with Angela, and I answer, or I didn't answer, but she left me a voicemail, and she's just, it was the dumbest thing, and she was just like, hi, I just wanted to let you know that there's this tryout, like, for the voice, and I, it was, like, on Twitter, and she's just talking in circles, and I'm, I didn't even follow what her voicemail said. It was so weird, but the bottom line was that she somehow won this pass to go to the voice tryout that was in Nashville the next day through something on Twitter, and she basically wasn't planning on coming to the wedding because she needed to practice all night and then wait and then do the audition the next day, and then she would come after her audition. And so, I mean, it just made me so mad. Luckily, that wedding was pretty small, and Angela and I can handle it, so I was like, okay, whatever. And so, not only... <laughs> she texts me the next day, and we're at the ceremony, and it was the a cluster of a wedding ceremony because everybody was late, and... Things the groom kept losing things, and the mother of the bride was nuts, and so it, we were just kind of running all over the place anyway. And she texts me, and she's like, "Where should I come? Like, I'm done. I'm ready to meet you." And so I didn't even respond. And then later, I was like, "Just look at the timeline. You can see where we are, and figure it out. Like, you're a big girl." And so she gets there, and later she starts explaining to us how she and she's giggling and thinking this is funny that she accidentally got the audition date wrong. And it was not the day of the wedding, but it was the following day on Sunday. And she was like, oops. And I don't think this is funny at all because not only could she have been there helping us the whole day. And learning. But she was dumb enough to get the date wrong. And, oh, it made me so mad. And so then she had the balls to not only come late, but then she requested to leave early because her boyfriend. She it was just so <laughs> stupid. Yeah, I got so mad and I just left the room. She made me hot every time she walked in a room. I disliked her so much. But that was one that I learned because I actually interviewed her over the phone because she couldn't she lived in Florida and she was coming to Nashville just for the internship. And so that's when, when I learned that I will never, ever, ever hire anyone until if I can't meet them in person before they intern, just because I would have definitely picked up on some of her personality traits in person. And then another time I asked a new intern to take care of something for a seating chart. And this is where I learned a lot about myself and that I only give half of the information sometimes and I don't need to assume that people know what I'm talking about. So what happened with this wedding is the seating chart, we had little platinum records that were actually magnets and the bride wanted to use these little records as a favor as well as to tell the guests where to sit at each table because her dad was a singer-songwriter. He had passed away, and just to pay tribute to him, she wanted to do that. So these records were really, really important. So when the records came in the mail, and mind you, they were super crazy expensive for a favor and an escort card, they came in individual bags, and they were in individual bags for a reason. So I had asked the intern to take them out of the baggies and lay them out in alphabetical order, like from A to Z. So I walk away for about two hours, I come back, and she did what I asked, but she didn't lay them out the way that I would have laid them out. She basically stacked them, so when I walked over and looked at the records, I already knew what was going to have happened. And so all of the ink, except on the top record, had smeared everywhere. All the ink was smeared. And I looked at her, and I said... This is my fault because I didn't tell you. I should not have assumed that you knew how to do this. But they're in individual bags for a reason. And I would like to know how you would handle this. And she started crying. I felt horrible. Um, she's like, I guess I would go get a whiteout pen at Office Max and start whiting things out where I can. And that's exactly what we did. And we got those records cleaned up just as quickly as we could. And there were, there's a lot of different learning points that we've had <laughs> in working with other people, and everybody has their strengths, and everybody knows 
what they're good at, and they're not all cut out for the events industry. Um, one girl who didn't make it past the interview stage was a very, very sweet girl, and I talked to her on the phone a few times and looked through her social media profiles and stuff, and she seemed really qualified, so I met with her for an interview, and we're just talking. I'm asking her all of the typical questions that I have for people, and all of a sudden she tells or I, I think I asked her why she wanted to be in the events industry or the wedding industry or how she found Angela I don't remember what it was but she said well my current place of work is closing down and she's looking for new opportunities and she's always been interested in events and so I was like oh okay well where do you work and she responds and says the name of a club that I have never been to, but I know what it is. <laughs> and, and I was like, wait, where is it? And she said it again. And I, and in my head, I'm like, holy crap, this girl's a stripper. And she worked at the strip club. And it was the most, like, she did not, I mean, she was so sweet, but it was like, it was just shocking. Like, I had no idea. And it, I, she was totally fine with it. And it was just really funny, and Angela's comment afterwards was like, oh my gosh, what if somebody were to walk in, like the groom or the groomsman, and recognize her from like the bachelor party? How embarrassing would it be? So she unfortunately did not get the internship position, but she was still a very sweet girl, but it was a good learning experience for me to be a bit more diligent with my current place of work environment question before I interview people. <laughs> Like, how do you go from working at a strip club to walking into a luxury event and wedding planning office? I'm sorry. It just doesn't really go together. Um, all right. So we're going to tell a few more stories because I feel like we could go on and on forever. Um, but one that really stuck out to me is when Dropbox first made the upgrade years and years ago. Um, where you could sync your pictures to it and you actually had to go into the notifications in the system preferences and tell it not to sync your pictures to Dropbox. And so when you updated your Dropbox, if you didn't know that, your pictures auto-synced. And so one Saturday morning, I wake up and I pick up my computer and I open it up and all these notifications popped up on my computer from Dropbox that I was getting images well, I thought the images were simply from a client sharing inspiration pictures because this is when Pinterest first came out. Nobody really knew how to use it yet, so everybody was dropboxing me pictures. And I clicked on them, and they were pictures of a girl that was working with me at the time. She was nude, and then there were other pictures with her and I guess one of her boyfriends doing things that like you wouldn't want your boss to see. So I immediately texted her and I'm like, hey, I think you accidentally like synced your personal pictures to the company Dropbox. So I would suggest you fix it immediately. And she texted me right back and was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm in a wedding next year and I'm documenting my weight loss. I'm going on a diet, you know, and I, I was like, whatever, I bought it. But that, that train, that gravy train for her ended shortly after that because there were some other things that came up. But that was just kind of the icing on the cake for me with that one. Yeah, she was she was very special. And she actually, um, one time we were scheduling a meeting, and Angela uses her Siri dictation a lot to add tasks to our to-do list or to email or whatever she's doing. She uses her voice dictation on her computer and her phone. And so she added a task on our to-do list for this girl to set up this meeting at the huddle house which her she, i think that the name the name of the venue was not the <laughs> huddle house but she had it was a venue we had never worked at before and she was probably in the middle of doing something else and couldn't remember the name of the venue at the moment and it sounded similar and so this girl knew that that wasn't the name of the venue, but instead of clarifying with Angela what she was referring to, she, for some reason, assumed that Angela was referring to Waffle House. So this girl proceeds to schedule a meeting with a client at a Waffle House, and Angela luckily realized it like the day before the meeting and it says, no, 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 we're meeting at the venue. And the bride and groom thought it was funny and they're like, yeah, we were wondering what kind of like backwoods planner we were working with that wanted to meet at Waffle House. <laughs> 
So that was really funny. And we definitely learned about clarification and making people very aware that it's good to ask questions and it's okay to ask questions. And we learn from every single one of these experience and have, I have improved my interviewing techniques a lot since five years ago when I started doing it and know a lot more about how, be how to better screen people and the types of questions to ask. But it's all just a learning process and you don't just wake up, you know, knowing how to do this stuff. It takes a village, but we've definitely learned a lot. But Angela, what would you say that your biggest takeaway is from all of our fun intern experiences? Well, these are just some of our stories. And like you said, I think that it makes us better leaders and communicators. And still to this day, half the time, um, I don't give all the information because I have so many things going on in my brain at one time. And learning to focus and stop multitasking has become very, very important for me as I'm teaching and leading a team. And thankfully, the girls that are on our team now have been around me long enough to know, like to ask and clarify and don't assume. And we'll do another one of these intern podcasts one day because we have more great stories. But thanks for listening. And if you have any intern stories that you would like to share with us, uh, send them over. We would love to hear your stories. Great. Well, Angela, can you share with our listeners some of the different products and resources you have available to help wedding and event planners? Absolutely. You can visit the blog on the website, and there's lots of great articles and resources available there, which it's angelaprofit.com. You can sign up for tips and resources and be part of our email list. We'll send you all kinds of juicy details. We do webinars and live events, so watch social media for more about that. Awesome. Well, Angela, thank you so much for sharing your valuable advice with us today. I can't wait for next week to tell more of our incredible experiences together. And thank you, Allison, so much for joining me. And thank you so much to our listeners for joining us today on Weddings Unveiled, Professional Tips and Secrets on Wedding Planning and Event Design. Tune in next week to learn more from our past experiences. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Be sure to subscribe today so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. I'm so passionate about helping other event professionals, and with my background in psychology, I appreciate that our best selves develop from real-life situations. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on angelaprofit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to angelaprofit.com.